there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint hyssop. And since we're starting off the Lenten season, it seemed like it would be appropriate to use a verse from Psalm 51, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hyssop is found in a number of places in the Bible and in some very significant places. This one I thought would be nice to have with the, with the words from the psalm in a box. So I've blocked off the box with a rectangle and then sketching in the stem. The stalks of hyssop, from what I could see on the internet from my research, have little flowerets on them. So they get smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom, like wider. And so you can create that kind of an almost long, elongated triangle shape and then create a bunch of circles on them. And the circles can overlap a little bit and touch a little bit, but this gives you an idea of where the flowerets are. Now, I decided not to draw in all the little flowerets, and I'll show you a really easy way to get around the fact that nothing is drawn in except for little circles. I'm mixing a pinkish purple because these flowers come in a bunch of different colors, but pink and purple seem to be most common. And they are really, really tiny. So like I said, this is super zoomed in. If you look for pictures on the internet, look for ones that are really close if you want to see what I'm trying to, to draw out here. But I'm filling in in between the circles. But when I get to the left and right edges, I'm letting those kind of disappear. And if you end up drawing too much in there and, and giving it too hard of an outline, then I'll show you in a moment what we're going to do to solve that. I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm going to mess up what I've just painted. And the reason is I don't want this to look like a cartoon hyssop. I want it to look like a loose, washy, gorgeous hyssop. So I am just moving the color around and softening edges. And especially if you have any edges on the left or right where you've drawn too much in on your flower, then loosen it. And just break that up so you don't have real hard edges at this stage. So we're going to add more detail to it. If you end up with a really moist, wrinkly page, you can always put another sheet of paper over it and iron it and flatten it out a little bit. But now I'm going to go in and start refining my flowerette shapes by just drawing in the edges of a few petals on each one. And some flowers are going to have four petals, some three, some five. I'm not really worried too much about that. I just want to create the illusion that there are petals on each one of these flowerets. Don't just draw an outline all the way around the whole thing or you're going to have to baby wipe it. Just going to tell you now, it's going to save you some pain because if you have an outline, it's going to look cartoony. So make some edges darker and some lighter. Let them be broken up. And now I'm going to add the centers and in the center, it goes in. So there's like little trumpet shaped flowers and about two thirds of the way up or a third from the top, I'm putting a dot of paint and then using a clean brush to pull some color down. And that's going to help it look like there's like shadows that are going into that little dot shape in the center and when it like they're dimensional so that you're looking into the little little holes, the little centers of each one of the flowerets. And one of the nice things about this was that it took me a, a nice long time to paint all these little flowerets. And I did some practicing of this in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook before I even started this. And it was a really wonderful meditative time thinking about the, uh, the needs that I have in my life for cleansing and letting the Holy Spirit really work on my heart while I was doing this painting. So if you find something like this is really tedious, don't think of it as tedious. Think of it as beautiful meditation time because that's why we do Bible journaling. We don't do this so we can get a page done quick. We do this because we want to spend time with the Lord and respond to what we're reading in the Word. Around the outside, I wanted to create that illusion that I've got at the bottom. The bottom section turned out much more like what I was thinking. I wanted it to look like it was fading off into the distance and like there were, they were blown out highlights around the outside edges. So I'm creating some by only doing the centers of those outer 
little flowerettes. I did my lettering with a micron pen, cleanse me, wash me, let me hear joy, which is all from the verses in Psalm 51. And I decided I would add little centers to my flowers now that everything was good and dry, just making a couple lines with a white gel pen, depending on what kind of flowers you're making, because these are similar to a lot of other flowers. You may need to do that with a black pen or another color or something, but the the whole thing came out really beautiful and elegant and puts the focus on the text, which is what, for me, Bible journaling is all about, is what are the words that God has spoken or that I have spoken to God, and this is a prayer that I want to be cleansed during this Lenten season. I will see you all again next week with another Bible journaling video. Take care and have a blessed one.